The Poem of the Man God, the first year of the public life. Chapter 113. In Lazarus's house again, after the tabernacles. Invitation of Joseph of Arimathea. 20th of February, 1945. I do not know how I will be able to write so much because I hear that Jesus wants to appear with the gospel as he lived it, and I suffered all through the night to remember the following vision, of which I scribbled the words I heard, as best I could, in order not to forget them. And now, at eleven o'clock, I see this. Jesus is once again in Lazarus's house. From what I hear, I gather that the tabernacles have already been celebrated, and that Jesus has come back to Bethany through the insistence of his friend, who would never like to be separated from Jesus. I also realise that Jesus is at Lazarus's only with Simon and John, while the others are scattered in the area. Finally, I understand that there has been a kind of meeting of friends, still loyal to Lazarus, who has invited them so that they may meet Jesus. I understand all that because Lazarus expounds even more clearly the moral characters of each. Speaking of Joseph of Arimathea, he defines him a true and just Israelite. He says, He dare not say so, because he is afraid of the Sanhedrin, of which he is a member, and which already hates you. But he hopes to see in you the one predicted by the prophets, he spontaneously asked me if he could come to meet you and form his own opinion of you, as he did not think that what your enemies said about you was right. Pharisees has come from as far as Galilee to accuse you of sin, but Joseph's evaluation was, who works miracles has God with him, who has God cannot be in sin. Nay, he can but be one loved by God. And he would like to have you at Arimathea as his guest. He asked me to tell you, and I beg you, please, grant his request and mine. I have come for the poor, and for those who suffer in their souls and bodies, rather than for the mighty ones who consider me only an interesting object. But I will go to Joseph's. I am not against the mighty ones on purpose. One of my disciples, the one who, out of curiosity and self-proclaimed importance, came to your house without any order from me. But he's young and we must bear with him. Can testify to my respect for the mighty castes who proclaimed themselves the guardians of the law. And they mean the sustainers of the Most High. Oh, the Eternal Father sustains himself by himself. None of the doctors ever had the same respect as I had for the officials of the temple. I know, a great many know, but only the best call such attitude by the right name. The others call it hypocrisy. One gives what one has of oneself, Lazarus. True, but go to Joseph. He would like to have you next Sabbath. I will go. You can let him know. Also, Nicodemus is good. Yes, he said to me, can I tell you a piece of criticism on one of your disciples? Yes, do. If he is a just man, he will say what is just. If unjust, he will criticise a conversion, because the spirit gives light to the spirit of man. If he is an upright man, and the spirit of man, guided by the spirit of God, possesses a superhuman wisdom and can read the truth in hearts. He said to me, I do not criticise the presence of unlearned people or of excisemen among his disciples of Christ but I do not consider worthy of being one of his disciples. The man who I do not know whether he is for him or against him 
but is like a chameleon, which takes the colour and the appearance of what is around it. That is discariot, I know. But believe me, youth is a wine that ferments and then becomes purified. When fermenting it, it swells and foams and overflows in all directions through excess of vigour. A springtime wind blows in all directions and seems a mad ruffler of foliage. But it is the wind we have to thank for fecundating flowers. Judas is wine and wind, but he is not evil. His behaviour upsets and perturbs. It even hurts and causes one to suffer. But he is not completely wicked. He is a fiery coal. You say so? I am not competent to judge him. I still feel bitter at the fact that he told me that you had seen her. But your bitterness is now sweetened by honey, because of my promise. Yes, but I remember that moment. Sorrow is not forgotten even when it ends. Lazarus, Lazarus! You worry about too many things, and so trifling. Let days go by like air bubbles that vanish and never come back in their bright or sad hues. And look at heaven. It does not vanish. It is for the just. Yes, master and friend, I will not criticize the fact that Judas is with you, or the fact that you keep him. I will pray that he may not be harmful to you. Jesus smiles, and it all 